Hi everybody. Um, in this video, I'll be talking about my journey four years after I've shot the video series How to Reverse Eczema Without Using Steroids. And this was because I actually received a comment on um, social media. And the person actually said like, you know, can you give us an update, status update as to what's your journey like right now? And I was like, that's a good idea. <laughs> so um, right now, just status update is that um, I deal with minor eczema like on my you know, on my elbows and like my knees. And that is usually when I eat something that I shouldn't eat. Um, it's a lot lesser compared to what I used to experience in the past, which is like the whole body just eczema. Like seriously, not kidding you. Like even my cheeks are all eczema. Like sleeping is a nightmare. Like I couldn't go out. I couldn't wear short sleeves and stuff like that. I couldn't like wear shorts. It's just super bad. Um, right now, I think the reason why um, my skin has gotten better over the years is because um, 90%, I stick to my diet. So pretty much my diet is like vegetarian and uh, paleo. Paleo-ish, I said I eat less grains. I try to avoid wheat as possible. Wheat is the devil to me. Dairy is also the devil to me. And I did notice a few things with the diet as well. Um, let's say if I ate something that had wheat, uh, the trigger for me, like for me to see the eczema symptoms coming out would be like much later. But dairy products is like within a 24-hour or 48-hour period. So then I realized like, you know, with certain food, I have certain sensitivities and that sensitivities just mean that um, the reaction is like, how fast does it come out or how bad is it? So for me, I think this is one learning I've I taken in the entire four years is that um, you have to like really understand like your body in the sense that you must have awareness as to like what you eat and how fast this certain reaction comes out. And you, this is, has something got to do with you in the sense that are you willing to deal with those reactions? For example, let's say you know I'm not I'm not willing to deal with the reaction of day eating dairy products, so I avoid it like you know like this the devil. But if let's say if I accidentally eat something with wheat inside it, it's I'm not going to really fuss about it. But I'll just ensure that I don't I don't go I don't fall off the bandwagon of starting to eat like things that contain wheat in it. Uh, because I think partly something important is that to observe is that um. When it comes to diet as well, right? Uh, perhaps once you have avoided eating certain things that like wheat dairy and maybe corn and soy sometimes you get used to the fact you don't eat it anymore uh, however there may be times that you may be tempted to eat it perhaps in the social setting or you feel like you know everybody's eating like maybe pizza or something you don't miss out so that really does depend from person to person as to like how is it that you navigate um, the diet in your life on a long-term basis and you know what is it that you would, you're comfortable to deal with as, as long as you're comfortable to deal with something and you know what you're gonna what's gonna happen to you after you eat something, that's fine, you know. There's something you have to accept. I was actually talking to my GP the other day and I was like, and he was like, you know, it's not like diet is not supposed to be like a prison for you, you know what I mean? It's like if you eat something, you eat it for that one meal, don't like beat yourself over the head over it. Just eat that thing and then just the next day, please go back on your diet, like the health, the, the diet that's right for you, basically, like you know, that helps your gut healing. So I think I, the lesson I took from this approach is that um, not to beat myself over hit for it, but also be very conscious about there's always consequences. Uh, reversing eczema does not mean that you can go on a jolly spree and just eat whatever you want, do whatever you want, like, you know, and lead a very unhealthy lifestyle because the eczema will reverse you again. It's like this like horrendous neighbor that, you know, you don't do certain things to keep it away, they'll come and revisit you back again. So um, there's a few things I learned throughout this four years as well, which I think is very interesting. Um, is that uh, usually people like when it comes to food right I used to think that food was like something that you have to like navigate socially and it's incredibly difficult and I, what I realized over the four years is that people are very accommodating if they know that um, you can't eat certain foods because of you know you're trying to uh, live a more healthy lifestyle to, um, to reverse eczema or to actually manage it they are incredibly very helpful actually um, sorry I, I, they're incredibly very accommodating and uh, what I learned was that uh, basically, if, you, if that's the case, that's you're eating out with a bunch of friends or like, colleagues whatsoever, right? Always have like a, maybe a backup plan of certain food places that, ha that can accommodate your diet. For example, like um, let's say I were to go out with uh, some friends, right? Maybe I would pick like, I have like maybe three or four restaurant places I know that I can eat the food at. So whenever they say like, oh, let's go eat somewhere, I can already like, you know, suggest perhaps that place. Um, so that's always like, I think it's like um, instead of feeling self-conscious like 
whether like I'm imposing on that, is my diet imposing on them, I would actually like try to come up with solutions. And I usually think that people are quite receptive to it. Um, people are accommodating in that sense. Um, again, I think with the diet aspect, uh, it's something I realized that it's something you're going to have to do with the rest of your life because food is something you eat three times a day, seven days a week, 365 a day, days a year. So it's something you're going to have to do with the rest of your life. So having a, maybe a little bit of a structure or even a strategy, like figure out how to like, when you're going to eat out, you know, what are certain restaurants or cafes you have in mind that you can eat out and, you know, they have certain things that can cater to you and that's no issue. And also I think being incredibly upfront with people about why is it that you're on this diet as well? Because I feel like, you know, people are really accommodating in the sense that, you know, they know it's a health issue and then they're totally fine, you know, they don't, um, they're not going to ostracize you for it, like, you know what I mean? So I think this is the most like humbling experience I ever realized is that um, people are accommodating, you know, um, and you don't have to feel like you're alone because you're embarking on a diet that you feel will help you to reverse or actually maintain your health condition to be a good, a good health condition where you're not dealing with eczema, extreme eczema, basically. The next um, point I want to discuss actually is to do emotional state. And uh, this is emotional state is because I feel like um, sometimes when it comes to diet and eating, uh, there are times where people's emotional state affects them as to what they eat. For example, they know they shouldn't eat like dairy or they should eat things with wheat. But when they feel stressed, they started to like do all these cheat meals and stuff like that or emotionally eat. And this is what had happened to me um, previously. So this is something I feel like I can talk about. Uh, partly, I think it's about looking at food as something, not as a solution to your emotional state. Like, for example, you're feeling stressed, sad, or anxious, or worried, or whatever. To not look at food as a solution to it. Because I think the fastest way sometimes how we human beings like change how we feel is to just either smoke, either drink or either eat. This is either one of the three. Um, for me, I, you know, in the past, I, I have eaten things that, you know, I knew was going to like maybe cause me a little bit of problem in the future. But, you know, at that point in time, I felt like eating it because I was stressed. I think a better way, solution, how to deal with emotional states is to have self-awareness and also do certain practices like journaling. Um, personally, I've journaled like for the last, I think last year, I started journaling about one, one year plus, like one, year f one and a half years ago. And partly the reason why I came across journaling was that um, I did actually go for counselling for about close to about, I think, a year and a half. So that was around the same time frame as well. Um, partly the reason why I went to counselling was because I realised that um, dealing with eczema for a long period of time over the span of 10 years left me with things emotionally that I, wa I was not resolving I could not resolve on my own um, personally speaking I am a person that is like I can go and find all sorts of resources on the internet we all sorts of books but I realized that there comes a point where sometimes you have to involve a professional when it comes to dealing with emotions and you know getting under your psyche and and uh, trying to get better as well and I think especially for people who deal with autoimmune I think um, that also depends how long you have been battling with it Sometimes, you know, including a professional is, is incredibly helpful and you'll make the level of progress you, have, you would have otherwise not made, basically. And the reason why I say that is because um, when you talk to a counsellor, right, it's that you are getting an independent third party that is trained to listen to you uh, and also is also trained through their own professional experience dealing with multiple people as well that can now become one of your support system. And then as you're going through the journey, whether you're dealing with eczema right now or you have crossed that bridge and dealt with eczema and now you're in recovery mode or you're in this like management mode right now, that person's able to you know, be one, be a person in your corner basically. And um, actually, uh, just, just a high, quick highlight on how that process of um, hiring a counsellor actually came about was that one of my friends actually had this platform called Mental Up. <laughs> excuse me, M-E-N-T-A-L-O-G-U-E in Malaysia. So I think in overseas right now, I think you guys have different platforms when it comes to counselling and therapy sessions and things like that. So um, always refer back to those things. And basically I went on this platform and I went scouting for like a counsellor. Um, just a brief background on how the whole thing works is that um, counsellor basically is like you 
find the counsellor on the app, on the website, contact the person, and you can also do a background check as to whether the person is professionally accredited uh, by the counselling board and things like that. Then after that, you book a discovery call. I like to call it discovery call. Uh, that's uh, about one hour. So that is when you and that counsellor will clarify your expectation. What is it you're looking to gain from that counselling session? And then the counsellor will have a chat with you basically back and forth for I think about one hour. And then you can decide whether you would like to progress further to uh, work with this counsellor. And before you start your work with this counsellor, uh, there will be a uh, written document that you will sign, you will read and you'll sign it. And this will determine the, this will dictate the terms and conditions of this uh, arrangement, working arrangement within you and the counsellor. So I think... Um, the reason why I will talk about this in further detail as well as to how this whole counseling thing works is because I feel that there is a like a serious like lack of information out there about what counseling truly is. Um, when I first started counseling, I was like thinking all those movies in the sense that are you gonna lie down on a chair in those movies and counseling just write notes and stuff, and then just talk talk talk, and the counselor just writes notes, <laughs> and then the counselor just close off the book and say bye bye. I'll like see you next session. So I didn't know what it was, but after like one and a half years about like going through counseling, um, I've began to see there's a tremendous level of improvement and impact of counseling had in my life. So this is something I feel that's extremely important to share. Uh, and also, uh, basically, it's um, basically I, that is just the starting of the counseling um, progress session in the sense that you sign a, a written document, terms and condition, send them back to your counselor, and then you guys start the counseling sessions basically and sometimes I guess it could be from weekly to bi-weekly to eventually start to progress to monthly um, for me I think that uh, counseling it does depend on what you're talking to a counselor for but I do think that unless it's serious medical issues or clinical uh, diagnosis uh, where you need to be on ongoing um, counseling uh, sessions with a counselor for indefinite period of time most of the time, once you have achieved the goal, you're set up with your counsellor, right? Then you are technically graduated from the counselling session, which means that you don't have to go uh, and talk to your counsellor anymore unless you choose to. And that also means that there's a certain level of progress milestone they've hit for yourself. And the reason why, you know, people go to counsellors is because there are things they want to resolve, things they want to be better at so that their life can improve. So once you hit the milestone already, then, you know, going forward already, you know, you have the tools, you learn tools during this counseling session that can better enable you to be a better person or to cope with life, basically, in terms of stress, in terms of emotional things that can crop up and other things as well. And also even to ad address underlying issues and things like that. So I think that's the reason why um, I would encourage anybody who is dealing with eczema for a long period of time or any other autoimmune issues for a long period of time to start, you know, potentially looking to a counsellor to help to... Um, to deal with the emotional side of this illness. Um, because personally, I felt for some people, or particularly myself, is that when you're dealing with a problem you can't fix, right? There are times where the human psyche will just retreat, detach, and just become very like um, detached human being from the pain. And I think that's a normal human response. Unfortunately, um, the problem is that, that the strategy does work in the short term, but over a long period of time, the strategy tends to seep into different aspects of your life. And that is when, uh, I think the problem happens is that what works in one area may not work in all areas. Uh, it might bring other areas detrimental effect. So, um, which is why I think it's important to, uh, you know, talk to, to mental health professional and there's no shame in talking to a counsellor. There's no, there's no, there should not be any shame about dealing with a mental health professional because um, like everything else, I believe that we want to get better and getting better includes uh, talking to someone uh, who's uh, certified, licensed, and also better equipped to help us navigate through this difficult period of our life. So I'll move on to my next point. Um, dealing with autoimmune, I think, can affect choice of industry that you choose to work in, particularly for those that are working already. Um, this is something I struggle with initially in my head when it came to like, recovering after... Um, dealing with eczema for about 10 years. Uh, initially, I thought that, you know, for a long period of time, I thought that, you know, to work in certain industries that have long hours, high stress uh, deadlines was something that I could eventually do uh, once I had recovered. But I realized that um, it comes to a point where all of us have to make our own decisions as to what is it that we are willing to do 
uh, how much can our body actually can take. And it, we should not be ashamed that we choose a path of work-life balance. And what I mean for that is that everybody of us has different capabilities and actually, uh, uh, what I call that, um, ability to cope with certain things. And there may be a time as well where, you know, you may choose to pick a career path that is not so demanding, that you have some, you know, time, there's always time available for you to do certain things, like exercise, eat right, or does not include a lot of like um, entertaining clients, for example, of drinking and stuff like that. So I think end of the day is that uh, living long-term in managing autoimmune system, immune issue that does not come back to haunt you again, requires you to make certain conscious choices. And conscious choices, will unfortunately, also mean that you have to consider like um, the industry you're working in. Or uh, are there certain things in your life that's not helping you in making better choices in your life? For example, when it comes to diet, uh, sleep, uh, you know, proper proper nutritional intake and also exercise and stuff like that. Because I feel that um, for someone that deals with autoimmune issues, right, the biggest thing that they can do to help themselves is to create a lifestyle that does support them in all these aspects which they need to keep up with. Diet, sleep, exercise, mental health, be- men- mental well-being, and that sometimes may come with the effect of you know choosing whether you know you should actually go into a certain industry although you want to go into, but the the lifestyle that comes along with it is not conducive to your overall growth and health basically. So sometimes that's always a difficult conversation to have or to think about. Um, but other than that, I think it's incredibly important um, for us to to actually start to think about it. Uh, because my perspective is that you know we are no good to anybody if we are unwell. If we're not healthy, uh, we we can't we can't contribute to anything to anybody. So it's always about I I believe it's always about prioritizing, um, maintaining your health so that you can be a good contributing member of society. You can do your job well. You can give your hundred best percent to everybody that you're working with. So that's my perspective on it. Uh, the next point actually comes with um, life is right now great, I think partly because of um, sort of daily exercise. And also I did coin this term, well, I didn't coin this term, I did steal this term from another like um, content creator called Get Fit or Die Trying. So um, what happened was that over the last couple of years, I actually had um, made friends with people that are very into fitness. Um, they walk, they hike. And I started like, you know, trying to recreate this habit in my own life where I started to like have certain goals, for example, like 10K steps a day or like 5K steps a day or drinking X amount of water uh, or, you know, um, basically the idea is that you want to infuse exercise in your day-to-day life as much as possible and you want to be around people that, that again, reinforce good habits, especially when it comes to exercise. And I think sometimes like, if you ask me like in the past, right, will I go for hiking? Will I go for walking? I'll be like, hell to the no. <laughs> Uh, but when you're around people who emphasize on health, when they, you know, you guys can hang out together by walking or hiking, that just makes, that gives you more in, in, uh, motivation to actually do healthy habits as well. And I think um, the most important thing we can do in our life is to, uh, to keep hanging around people who have healthy habits. Because we ourselves, I mean, human beings are lazy, like, okay, let's put it this way. But being around people who have discipline and who have certain healthy habits, because we are because we are always spending time with them, or because we we spend time together with them doing healthy habits, therefore that's how we begin to inculcate a better lifestyle for ourselves. So sometimes I think this is a case of how you use like positive peer pressure into uh, creating the life that you want, um, and that also means is that um, when you spend time more with people who are healthy and have healthy habits, right? After a while, you start to feel like oh, you know, I used to be unhealthy when I started walking hiking with them. But now, hey, I can like I, my stamina has improved, or uh, I feel happier as a result of like spending time with them, doing healthy healthy activities, basically. And after that, in a weird way, it starts to change your perspective about yourself, in the sense that you feel like, hey, you know, last time I was to was like a lazy person, but now I'm I'm like a person that cares about myself in the sense that I will like do healthy things like walk, hike, do my ten k steps, or drink X amount of water every day. And try to lead a healthy life, so I think the, I think we can build a lot of like long term habits by being around people that do healthy things and you know 
constantly try to reinforce the habit for ourselves as well. Um, the next point I have um, in the sense of dealing what it means like to live to live with something you have rever- sorry, um, the next point I have is what is life like after reversing like eczema after 10 years of dealing with it? Um, I think it, there's a few aspects that would break this down under, but I would think um, basically for me, it's that I found a lot of confidence in myself. I was able to speak up more when I, when I reverse eczema. And until today, I refuse with the whole like social media thing about body positivity and like this, I mean, this thing I saw on social media that got me so pissed off that said like every skin is beautiful and they train people with chronic skin issues like acne. And while I can understand the reason why they're trying to say that, maybe they don't want to make people feel bad, but I think that's not helping our society because if you have a health problem, particularly a skin problem, particularly an autoimmune problem, it's more important to actually go out there and fix it. Living in denial and wanting people to say like you're fine where you're not okay is actually not helping the issue because skin is a reflection of health and um, it's not about making us feel bad about having this autoimmune issue that is affecting us, but more of like, how can we solve problems? And when we do solve problems, we have a newfound respect for ourselves. Our life becomes better. We look at ourselves differently. And along the lines, we learn a lot of things that we can take with us to the next phase of our life. The key thing for me, I learned throughout this entire period was that if I knew what I knew now, I would have tried to fix dealing with uh, eczema a lot sooner. Because I think that there is no, there's no benefit dealing with a problem for as long as I, I dealt with it. Um, and I also do think that there was a lot of catching up I had to do in the space of like the 10 years worth of life I felt I had missed out on. There's a lot of catching up I had to do. And for a long period of time, maybe I felt a level of resentment for missing out on a large portion of that 10 years, basically. Um, socially, I found that I had to do a lot of things to, to sort of keep catch, catch up on point with socialize, socializing people. Um, partly because in the past that I would, during when I was dealing with eczema, right, I would like totally isolate. I would just go to work, come back home, and that, that's it. Um, what I found useful is that going for meetup.com, like activities and meetup, you know, going for a lot of events, like, you know, trying to, again, rebuild a social life and also, um, uh, you know, polish social skills is something I, I have, uh, I believe in. And also, I think that uh, although all of us, may suffer at any point in time when dealing with an autoimmune issue, depending how long it has been. There are certain aspects of a life that has gone haywire as a result of dealing with it. However, there are certain things we can do to catch up or rather to um, you know, regain back. But I do think it will come with a lot of work. There's no two ways about it, I feel. Uh, however, I think it's important to recognize that every time when you do something that you feel like, oh, I don't want to do it, but I know it's good for me, but it's going to be good for me in the long term. That is always a win for you. And this is how I choose to approach like different aspects of my life that sort of suffered as a result of me dealing with eczema for about 10 years. Um, so socially, I think uh, going for meetups is important. Uh, being with friends, especially going to networking events with friends who are social butterflies. They're also kind of like, I like to call them wing men or wing women because that they can open up social conversations with people and that include you inside. And as a result, you can also... Tr- learn to practice on certain things from you observe from your friends as well like what I realized after a period of time after hanging out with uh, social butterflies for example in terms of friends I began better at introducing them as well whenever I had a conversation with somebody else and this is something that I still struggle with until today I'm not the most social person but I do feel I was better than I was like 10 years ago <laughs> which is a good thing um, another thing I did realize as well uh, aspect of life um, after recovery um with eczema is uh, confidence when it comes to career. I feel that um, come to a point where I started to recover very rapidly in terms of, in terms of my skin, I gotten more confident in speaking my ideas or pushing my ideas to the front. Uh, because in the past, I would not say anything openly because I felt like it feels very uncomfortable to be in a meeting and then you know you feel like your skin is just not good, like really not good, and you just don't want to draw attention to yourself. So um, I got more like confident about expressing my ideas um, 
in the workplace and I feel like there's been a one good thing about dealing with this uh, issue, this eczema issue for a long period of time. Um, the final aspect of life, I think, which is very fascinating to me, dealing with uh, recovering from eczema is uh, dating. I think dating has been something that um, <laughs> was a little bit challenging at first, but I think for me, what I realized that um, dealing with this illness has taught me a lot of things in the sense of not comparing myself to other people. <sighs> um, because I think sometimes you can get in your head and start to feel like when I'm dating somebody, right? What does this person see in me? Because this person has other options. Or there are other people um, who have better skin, you know, they can wear like short sleeves and stuff like that, like skirts, shorts, whatever. And then you start to wonder like, you know, you start to have like all these sort of insecurities and self-esteem issues, which I think could be there already for a long period of time. But I th- personally, I feel that it's not the job of your partner to reassure you. I think it's more of uh, coming to terms with your own head and also dealing with a pro- trained professional like a mental health counsellor, therapist, coach about how you want to navigate those things because I think that um, outer appearances just affect all of us in the dating sphere. There's no, um, there's no two ways about it. Like, let's put it this way. Um, the body positivity hasn't, movement hasn't helped us at all. I feel in the sense that they say like, oh, like everybody should be valued for like, regardless of what they look like, that's bullshit. Like, I feel that's just complete BS. Um, at the same time, I feel like it's very important to deal with our own issues um, because putting the responsibility on another human being is a very heavy duty. And personally, I feel like we should not be putting the heavy responsibility on another person's shoulder to keep on reassuring us because um, everybody in this world comes with their own stuff like their own issues that they are trying to work out. And for people that deal with autoimmune issues as well, you know, everybody comes with their own issues, so do we. Uh, but does not mean that we can't deal with it. I think it's uh, always important to have a, a social network, a social network that reinforces to us and that we can, you know, give back to them in terms of support, companionship, uh, and also um, comrad- camaraderie as well, as well as work with a mental health professional. Because um, working with a mental health professional enables us to actually process the trauma of dealing with autoimmune issue in a very safe place. Because the last thing we want to do is that we want to dump our issues onto somebody else and expect them to fix it without realizing that those issues are actually stemming from the trauma of dealing with autoimmune issue. So um, personally for me, I think this is the biggest takeaway I would say um, is about taking ownership of what has happened to us in the sense that it may not be our fault, what has happened to us, but we have the now the responsibility of finding a solution to fix it. And not saying that in the sense that we should beat ourselves over the head and like, you know, wail and cry and stuff like that. But there are a lot of resources out there in terms of how we can fix certain issues in our life. And we may not know all the steps right now, but starting at some point somewhere does help us to move to a better place. Um, at the same time, I think that um, reframing what does this a problem mean for us in terms of dealing with autoimmune issue is something very helpful or something I try to refrain for myself in the sense that um, when you think about people, right, you realize that now because you deal with autoimmune issue like skin, you start to think like, okay, what is it about the person that can value aside from the exterior? And reframing a problem sometimes I think is helpful because that if you're stuck in the problem, right, and then we think like, oh, the world hates me because I look like this or like, you know, I feel like unacceptable or I feel inferior and stuff like that. It's not going to help you. It just makes you feel like crap and that, that does not put you in the, in, the, in the best possible situation. I think what is more important in the sense that what has this illness taught you? Um, maybe the, the level of effort you put across to healing yourself teaches you that you have resilience, you have discipline, you have uh, a very strong will, determination to solve a problem. And that is very admirable. So I think sometimes it's about uh, dealing with the issue that you can and reframing the what does it mean to you right now. And for some people, it could mean a few different things. Like for example, they learn to see, they learn to see people um, below the surface in the sense that they, they, they don't look at the outside exterior. They learn to look at the person's intelligence, their personality, their character, and things like that. Um, it also means... I mean, this illness could mean so many different things to many different people, but I think that 
uh, what helps people get past this illness or rather manage it on a very long-term basis is that how do they see this illness and how do they uh, reframe it and what do they take uh, along with them as they journey throughout life with this illness as well. And I think for me, it also did... Um, it also did mean that uh, this illness did mean a lot of new things to me in the sense that, but I realized that, you know, um, there could be so many people dealing with eczema for like years and years and years and they're struggling to find answers. And it doesn't hurt me to actually like share this video with them. You know, um, I hope it helps them. I hope it helps you. So um, thank you for watching.